welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy, and today we are going to go through 10 really common mistakes that first time cruisers make and how to avoid them. But before we get into it, please consider subscribing if you have not already. And if you have any video suggestions, anything you want to see, let me know in the comments what they are, or you can DM me over on Instagram at Cruising as Crew. But yeah, let's get into it. The first mistake I see first time cruisers make is treating a cruise like an all-inclusive holiday. If people have solely done all-inclusive holidays, some people make the mistake of thinking a cruise vacation is very similar to that. So a lot of people do not budget for extra expenses while they are on board because they have the misconception that once they are on board, most things will be free because they've already paid the bulk of it up front. Now, while part of this is true, you know, obviously most of your food is included in the buffet and the dining area, you can absolutely get a selection of drinks for free. So there's a lot of temptation, you know, there are amazing shops that you can have a look around. There are going to be amazing speciality restaurants available that you can pay a premium to eat in. There are going to be activities on board that you might have to pay extra for. Some will be included and some will be, you know, will cost extra. So something I see a lot is people just don't account for this. And then obviously they get on board, maybe it's just a couple, maybe they're with the family and the family want to, you know, try this restaurant or try these activities that cost extra. And it can really ruin people's vacation because they're like, well, we just didn't budget for this. Either we've done it and we have now overstretched ourselves or we haven't done it and we just feel like we've missed out. We feel like we've kind of had half of the holiday. And then of course, on a lot of cruises you get hit with the gratuity bill at the end of the cruise which I have also seen a lot of people not budget for and actually that was something that uh, when me and my parents went on our first cruise I was you know me and my brother were children my parents did not realize that there was going to be such a large gratuity bill at the end of the cruise now you know luckily it was fine and we were able to pay it but the point is it's, if it's your first cruise, you just don't know these things, but it's okay because that is what I am here for. So please note that at the end of your cruise, there will be a gratuity bill that you are required to pay. There are going to be things that you are gonna want to do while you are on board that are gonna cost extra, whether that is food or activities or drinks. Maybe you just wanna get your coffee in the morning, but you know, you want an oat milk latte instead of the Americano that you can get in the buffet. So please account for spends on board and of course in port as well this is another area that people just don't think about and also excursions cost extra so this is very different to your all-inclusive holiday so really have a think about what you want to do while you are on board research the ship thoroughly see what amenities they have on offer and you can kind of base your budget on on what you want to do but also what you can afford and this way, hopefully, you're not going to have any nasty surprises. Missing the ship's departure time. Luckily, this does not happen all the time, but it definitely happens. And when it does happen, it is usually first-time cruisers. Because they get off in port, they go and explore by themselves, which, of course, is part of the fun. It's absolutely fine. But what they don't allow for is the time to get back. So let's say you're off in the Bahamas. The Bahamas is known for having horrendous traffic, exquisite beaches, but horrendous traffic. So, you know, you make your way to one of the most beautiful beaches. You know you've got to be back at the ship at four o'clock. So you leave the beach at half past three thinking you've got plenty of time but you've actually got an hour's worth of traffic to get through. So this obviously is going to stress you out to no end. I mean, I know it would stress me out, especially if it's your first time cruise. Although saying that, even if it was my 20th cruise, I'd still be stressed out if I was going to miss the ship. It obviously makes things very difficult for the cruise line, and it is just an all-round mess. So when you're on a cruise, it is very different to a hotel in that the hotel is going to stay stationary. It's not going to go anywhere. The cruise ship will. So you absolutely have to make it a priority to get back to the ship on time. Ask crew members about what the traffic is like in this port if you are thinking about, you know, getting a taxi to a certain destination. Because missing the ship could really put a dampener on your vacation. Skipping the travel insurance. This should never be skipped whether you are going on a land holiday or a cruise, but especially not a cruise ship. And the reason why is 
you know, your cruise could be cancelled because of weather change. You or a family member could get ill. The flights to the destination where you're joining your cruise ship could be cancelled or delayed. And, you know, again, unlike a land holiday where if your flight is eight hours late, the hotel stays where it is. So you can just get to the hotel when you get to the hotel. Your cruise ship moves. So if your flight is eight hours delayed, that's going to mean that you're going to miss embarkation for the cruise. You've missed your cruise. So especially with a cruise vacation, you absolutely have to get travel insurance as soon as you book the cruise. Overbooking excursions. I have seen this a lot. You know, people get very click happy when they're booking excursions before they get on the cruise. They're like, oh my God, yeah, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. Most excursions start at like seven or eight in the morning, which is obviously fine if you're a morning person. But a lot of people, when they're on vacation, they like to have a little bit of a lion. You know, it's all about relaxing. So I've definitely seen it where people have booked an excursion for every single day and they're like, oh my God, I'm knackered. I'm, kn I'm knackered. I can't do this. I can't keep up with this many excursions because it is a lot. Like most excursions require a lot of activity. You know, they're incredibly exciting, but they are energetic. Like they drain your energy. And everyone vacations differently. You know, I am very happy on a sunbed with a cocktail reading my book. Some people, their vacation is all about adventure. So you know you better better than I do. But if you're like most people and you want some exciting days but some relaxing days, keep this in mind when you're booking your excursions, okay? Don't book one for every single day. So just as a guide, I would say if you are going on a week's cruise vacation, three excursions is great. Not four. Really, like, it, that could just be a little bit too much. If you're going on a two-week cruise, six excursions is great. So kind of half the amount of days that you are going away. And this is if you really want to do loads of excursions. I mean, one excursion is brilliant. Because don't forget, yes, you have, an am you have these amazing ports to explore, but you also have an entire cruise ship to explore. So you are not going to be lost for things to do. Ignoring safety briefings is something some first-time cruisers do. You know, it's not, it's not all people, but... I think we can all have this attitude of like, it's never going to happen to me. I'm never going to be on a cruise ship that gets in an emergency. And while I hope to God that is true for you, you just never know. And as crew members, what we don't want is in an emergency, everyone is running around panicked because they didn't pay attention in the initial safety briefing. So they don't know where their emergency station is. So that's all I'm going to say. When you get on board, you're going to have to do a mandatory safety briefing. Please just pay attention. It's like 10 minutes out of your life. It's really like you can do it. I believe in you. If you take nothing else away from it, please just know where you have to go in the event of an emergency. Is it the dining room? Is it a restaurant? Is it the atrium? Like Everyone has a different designated assembly station based on, you know, who they're traveling with and their cabin, etc. That's all I ask. Just know where you have to go in the event of an emergency. Because as you can imagine, if the ship goes into an emergency and 1,000 crew have 3,000 passengers all saying, where do I go? Where do I go? Like, it's not going to make life any easier. A mistake that I see first-time cruisers make is not researching the ports that their cruise ship is going to go to. And you really want to do this before you book your excursions, actually, because an example. In Nassau, in the Bahamas, there is a straw market right outside the ship. And I mean like right outside the ship, okay? It's a two minute walk. There was an excursion available on board the cruise ship to take you to the straw market. So naturally, people who booked this excursion were a little bit pissed off when they got to the straw market and they were like, I could have just got off the ship and I would have stumbled across the straw market. You see what I mean? So the point is you need to research the port because you don't want to book an excursion that you could do on your own. I mean, maybe you do. It's your first It's your first cruise. So there's definitely safety with booking an excursion. But just in that instance, you want to make sure that you're not booking an excursion to go to a certain shop or go to a temple that's actually a five minute walk away from your cruise ship. 
you want to save the excursions for when you're going quite a significant distance away from the cruise ship because with an excursion you have the safety of the cruise ship will wait for you if the excursion is delayed which is one of the main benefits of going on a cruise ship excursion also you just want to research what currency they use what language is dominantly spoken is it easy to get around is it considered safe are there any restrictions and while the cruise line will be able to you know inform you about most things it's always nice to have done your own research so you kind of know what you're going into and going back to the excursion thing again it just helps me pick out which ports i'm going to do an excursion in like for example a european itinerary if one of the ports is Shivatavekia, which is the gateway port to Rome, and then the next day we are in Marseille, where the ship literally docks in the middle of town. I'm going to book an excursion for Chivitavecchia so I can go to Rome, which is an hour away, rather than book an excursion in Marseille, where I can just walk off the ship and I'd be immersed in the beautiful architecture and culture. Do you know what I mean? So definitely do a little bit of research before you go and I promise it will help you just enjoy the ports a little bit more. Not bringing medication. Now hopefully on your vacation you're not going to need medication. You're going to be healthy, happy and you're going to be having a fantastic time. But just in case something happens. I say it's always good to just bring a little pharmacy with you, you know, bring a bandage, bring a plaster, bring some ibuprofen, bring some emodium, some cook you know, just a few little bits and bobs. So if you, you know, get a cold or if you feel seasick, you've got it with you so you don't have to, you know, trope down to the medical center and wait for ages to be seen and pay a ridiculous amount of money to be seen by a doctor for them to just say you need some seasickness pills. But also so you don't have to buy medication when you're on board. So when you are on a cruise, there's going to be a necessity shop, we call it. So this is gonna have, you know, all your medication, your sanitary products, toothbrushes, but you're a captive audience, so those sea sickness pills that are $3 from your local pharmacy are going to be $10 on board because they can charge it. Because if you need them, you're going to pay it. So I would just take a little pharmacy on board with you. Again, hopefully you don't need it, but if you do, it's better to have it than to not. A big mistake is not pre-booking activities and speciality restaurants. So if you research the ship before you get on board, which you absolutely should do, and you see a restaurant that you really, really want to go to, most of these cruise lines now have apps and you can pre-book everything before you even get on the cruise. Pre-book it, even if you end up canceling your booking, pre-book it because once it's fully booked that's it i saw it a lot of the time when i was on board you know people would wait until the night that they wanted to go to a restaurant and then be really disappointed when it was fully booked so definitely pre-book it like before you get on board on the app you know whether this is a restaurant or an activity if you do not book it before you get on board as soon as you get on board on embarkation day before you even go to your cabin book the restaurant book the activity make sure you get it booked in because you know since 2020 cruise ships are only getting fuller and fuller and fuller which is obviously fantastic for the cruise industry but this does mean that things get fully booked very very quickly so you just need to make sure that you get in there and get what you want so that you can you know feel like you made the most out of your cruise vacation a mistake is not packing essentials in your carry-on luggage so when you get on board a cruise ship you will usually leave your large luggage with the crew members or the people that work in the terminal and this will arrive at your cabin later in the day but sometimes this can be much later in the day because these crew members can have between like 3,000 to 10,000 pieces of luggage to sort through and while there are a lot of crew members doing this task there's not as many as you think like maybe there's like 300 depending on the side of the ship size of the ship so 300 people sorting out 10,000 pieces of luggage like it's going to take time so what I see a lot is people get on board their cruise ship and they've put their chargers and all their clean clothes and maybe they want to have a shower but everything is in their large luggage so they feel a little bit debilitated like I can't do anything because I don't have my stuff and as I said sometimes this stuff doesn't arrive until like six or seven o'clock at night so make sure you have your essentials or things that you are going to want as soon as you get on board the cruise ship 
in your backpack or maybe you're taking a little um a little case on with you just so you've got it right there and you can kind of get on with your day and not stress about when your luggage turns up it will turn up but it just takes a little bit of time and it can just be annoying if you have packed all of your essentials in there okay and then this mistake is actually something that is done before or when you're booking a cruise which is overlooking the cabin location so if it's your first cruise, I'm sure seasickness has crossed your mind. Cabin location is going to play a huge part in this. So you want to be in the center of the ship. You don't want to be at the back. You don't, definitely don't want to be at the front because that's where you're going to feel the movement the most. So when you book a cabin, you want to make sure it is in the center of the ship. Also, you want to make sure the cabin that you book is surrounded by other cabins. You want a cabin either side. You want a cabin above, across and below you ideally you will find that the cheaper cabins are going to have a restaurant above them or the gym above them because it's going to be noisy so cabin location is really important one for seasickness but also noise you know if you've if you've got the gym above you and at 6 a.m every day you've got someone on a running machine, you are not gonna be happy. So when you are booking your cruise, cabin location is really important. Like I said, cabin, 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 cabin. You want cabins all around you because even if you have the noisiest neighbors in the world, they're not gonna be as noisy as someone on the running machine at six in the morning. Anyway, I really hope you have enjoyed that video. If you did like it, then please press the like button. It really helps me out. And if you have any video suggestions, anything you want to see, then let me know in the comments. Or you can DM me on Instagram at Cruising with Crew. But I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day. And yeah, I will see you in the next video, guys. Thank you so much.